science teacher Alison Tiltman is always on the lookout for new ideas that will excite and engage her students. And she's not afraid to get other departments involved, like design and technology and maths, if she thinks a cross-curricular experience will enhance their learning. Just because I'm a science teacher doesn't mean to say that, that you can't take science elsewhere. It's an all-round education that, that the students require and it's an all-round education they receive. We'll be examining two of Alison's pet projects. Later, we'll take a look at rockets. But first up, it's bath bombs. <laughs> the project started as an extracurricular activity, but Alison saw an opportunity to use it in her Year 9 science lessons to bring relevance to chemical rates of reaction and energy transfer. And by working with design and technology teacher Nikki O'Byrne, they were also able to find a way for her to cover the use of plastics and packaging design. To tie the whole project together, Alison challenges the students to imagine they're running their own cosmetics companies. And the first step in D&T is to design and make a mould for their bath bomb. We're doing an apple because we um, think that it can appeal to both men and female and it's like gives off like so we can use fru fruity flavours when we do our bath bomb so it smells nice and so we think it's just appealing. <laughs> what else do you think you could do to it to add some more detail? Well, we're putting more layers on it mm -hmm. um, for like the cherry on top of the cake. What about using some of the string because that will give you the rigid area of the, of the cupcake. What would you say yours is going to be like when it's molded? Well, it's going to be quite similar to yours, but obviously my eyes and mouth go out instead of in. Yeah. So who do you think is going to come out best? Mine, definitely. With the actual moulds themselves and making the moulds for the bath bombs, they have to use cardboard to actually cut out, so that then they can use the plastic and vacuum form the plastic to make the moulds to put the bath bombs in. The string came out well with the texture on the cake. And the cherry worked really well too. And hopefully it'll work well in the bath bomb too. The lines are like down there. And on here, like the lines are down there. So when the vacuum turned on, because it moulds to the exact shape of what you made, the line showed up. So next time we'd probably use the flat side of the cardboard. Uh, but overall we're pretty happy with it. And um, Miss Tiltman, she gave us an idea like, if you wanted a bit of a like effect, you could put some like fake worms in it. So when it fizzes out, all these worms come out. With the moulds ready to go, it's time to move to the science lab to start making the bath bombs. And Alison begins with a quick demonstration of one product found in the shops. So what we're going to look at today is what we can see happening, the speed at which the reaction takes place, OK? How possibly you'd make yours react a little bit quicker. OK, it's a little bit boring there. What you'd want in your bath bomb and what target audience you'd like your bath bomb to be for. Up on the board, just over here, you can see we've got a list of ingredients What's bicarbonate of soda do in water and in vinegar, guys, when we're doing rockets? It fizzes. So is that the reactive ingredient or not? Yes. So you can actually add a little bit more to speed up the reaction or a little bit less if you want a nice slow reaction. The other ingredients are there, of course, to make you smell nice. What we tend to do is think about where chemical reactions take place and the relevance of it in the real world. And we decided that bath bombs was a great starting point. So how we can make bath bombs fizz more quickly, react more quickly, how we can make them react more slowly. First up, the students weigh out the reactive ingredients. What's that corn flour? Yeah. Yes. Then do you want to do like 30 of the other two? Should we do a really, really like expensive? <laughs> we'll put like 20 grams of citric acid. No, 30. Well, we're making it faster, so we've added more citric acid so that it fizzes faster and there's a better chemical reaction. Because that one over there was quite slow. So. We wanted to put more in. Instead of using 15 grams, we use 20 grams. Next, it's time to add their choice of colour and scent. Now, Carly's just asked me how much do I add of the smell. 
it's entirely up to you. Do you want to have a nice overpowering bath? Do you want to have one that's going to make you sneeze? Do you want to have, have a bath that's, as you open the door, once you finish, that the smell goes through the house? Entirely up to you how much smell you want. I did see some Rudolph noses at Christmas that were bright red, and I actually bought one, put it in the bath, and I turned red. Okay, so it's entirely up to you how much you want to actually put in there. Oh. Well, I think we went, went for like orange, and then we put lemon in as well, so it's like a citrusy one. And then we went for red as well, because like we thought that was quite a cool colour. Alison puts a large part of the success of the project down to its cross-curricular nature. It just allows the, the students to see that, that not every subject is its subject in its own right. It, it goes across the board. You can incorporate your uh, science into other subjects. We're also thinking about our packaging and what it's going to be called. Um, we're going to make it as a full stop. So, full stop, enter, enter stress, something like that. We're making up slogans already. Ready? Alice? Yay! Well, we chose the mould because it's nice and circular, so that's a good amount of surface area to use. And, um, we are going to now put it onto the um, grounds and see if it holds its shape. <laughs> see, I think we haven't put enough oil in the base, so it's stuck to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it all out, put some more oil in and try again. So has it been difficult for Alison to set such a project up? There's lots of big challenges. A lot of that is support. I think you need support from the senior management in particular. You need support from other staff in other subject areas. Um, you need the time to be able to plan it. And you need to be able to be open to making mistakes and things going wrong. For example, when I first did the project, the bath bombs would not come out of their moulds or they just made them into slush. On the other hand, when it does go right, it's fantastic. <laughs> We'll come back later to see the final results. But first, Alison has kick-started another project at Crofton, and it's potentially even more explosive than the bath bombs. We're going to have one egg, and you guys have to protect two. We have to make the rocket go up 750 feet, and it has to hold two eggs in its nose cone, and these eggs when the rocket comes down with a parachute, um, the eggs can't be cracked or broken in any way. Currently, the rockets project is an after-school club, but it has obvious potential in science, maths and technology. Where's the long pokey thing? And like bath bombs, Alison hopes to find more ways to take advantage of its popularity in lesson time next year. We've actually filmed the rockets taking off that we've used within science lessons as well. So they're able to do their calculations and of speed, acceleration, gravity. That looks good, but what I would do is I'd duct tape over. Oh, yeah. We design it on SpaceCAD. It's a computer program which um, allows us to put the rocket together and then it will give us a predicted height and time so we can make adjustments. We got in the technical stuff, which was in fact the rocket motors and the altimeter. We also had to get fuses and quick match, which is gunpowder, so the rocket goes off. So are we ready to launch, guys? Yep. In times we've had rockets sort of spiral off and crash and do somersaults. And we often keep a bucket of water by us in case we set out like the grass again. Sometimes they don't launch at all and you don't know why, so you just have to stand there and work it out, which takes a while, but we're, we're getting better at it. We lost track of the rocket. <laughs>
The kids in the um, tennis courts have got it. Thankfully, the parachute and landing craft were found. But will the egg have survived? So let's see if it survived. Yes! <laughs> I've learned a lot from the rocket project. The science behind it as well is just really interesting, like the way and how you have to balance everything out, otherwise your rocket would do flips in the air. It's just really interesting and I love it and I can't wait to do it again. I've also learned how, um, how rockets are designed and um, what it takes to fire a rocket because rocket science is easier than it looks. Back to the bath bombs. By adding the business dimension to the project, Alison has found ways to extend it further. The students also use their design and technology and ICT lessons to explore packaging designs and display stands. While in maths, they have addressed the financial side of their businesses and investigated the potential costs and profits for their companies. But it doesn't have to end there. We introduced an apprentice style competition and they're able to compete with one another to make the bath bombs, sell the bath bombs and, and from that we, we decide which one is going to be hired rather than fired. People come to school and they see maths separate from other subjects but in a project like this it all joins together and they can see that maths and science, maths and technology all works together you know, and there is value to, you know, to, to learn in different aspects in different subjects. Back in science, and the moment of truth has arrived. It's time to see if their bath bombs will sink or swim. I want you to show us your bath bombs and tell us what ingredients you put in there, why you put the quantities you did, why you put the smells you did, and just give us a little bit of a, an idea of names that you, you may have come up with for your bath bombs. Well, we put 17 grams of citric acid and bi sodium bicarbonate, so the reaction would be a little bit quicker. And we were thinking of, because um, it, it's quite orange, you could do a tanning one. So it makes you go, it makes you browner in the bath. Fantastic, right, do you want to have a go and put it in the water? <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was a bit of a sinker then, wasn't it? Mm. Wow. <laughs> so we're hoping for an orangey smell. Can anybody smell the orange yet? I can. The project itself actually won a, a semi-final position in an innovative teaching competition, which was a worldwide competition. So the evidence is there that, that it does actually go places and have some sort of relevance across the board. We're trying to go for quite a high rate of reactions, so we've done 25 of both reactants, the citric acid and the sodium. Okay. We're calling it Cube Dude. <laughs> like that one. Fantastic. Right, we're going to try reacting it and, and wiping oily. the smile off his face. Go for it. See you later, cubes. That is a very quick reaction. <laughs> it's definitely worth all the hard work. Um, the kids get so much from it. Um, I, as a teacher, have, have gained so much from it with, with seeing the, the students take, take this and, and take it on board and, and doing what they do and, and, and enjoying their education. So if you want to take cool those with you, you're more than welcome to, and have a bath with them. <laughs> that, don't come running to me for 10. Orange tomorrow. Mm -hmm.